Hey everyone out there, this is Clint from the Butterfly Effect. Uh, just popped in to talk about the 21 year anniversary of our first album, Begins Here. Was kicking off a national tour. Uh, I think it's the end of January, isn't it? In Cairns, it's going to be crazy. It's it's going to be taking in the length and the breadth of the country. Uh, check your socials for tour dates and um, grab some tickets from the Butterfly Effect and um, we we will catch you somewhere along the road. Hey, that almost sounded professional. Well done. I practice, let me tell you. Thanks for joining us today, mate. Always a pleasure catching up. Mate, I, I love to be here. It's the uh, it's the place where I can let my hair down, literally, and, um, you know, talk uh, talk the talk without walking the walk. <laughs> Butterfly effect. Keep the party going in 2025, hitting the road from January the 30th for the 25 date, 21 years. It begins here, regional tour 2025, like, it's a lot of shows, mate. Like I thought you would have learned your lesson after the capital city twenty years to begin here run earlier this year. Um, mate, I know. Oh, I'm a sucker for punishment. And what can I tell you? My bloody drummer keeps booking uh booking gigs and I keep saying to him, I said, mate, how old do you think I am? We've we're bloody round in the bend for fifty. Um and I must say we're looking very good for fifty. But um yeah, thank you very much. Uh I'll be here all night. Um Yeah, mate, yeah, it's amazing though. But you know what the I'm going to need, oh, I've got to be honest with you, after this tour, I'm going to need the whole rest of the year to, to, to have off to recover. Um, but apparently, well, I've, I just got my car back from the mechanics and I've got to do a little bit of work to it. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to be uh, going to have a kissing booth off the side, you know, and, and some extra dollars. That is fun for the hair. <laughs> yeah, 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 come on, get down there. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, mate, but I'm, I'm, we're all really stoked. We're all really excited um, everyone's starting to, you know, ramp up to it. We're talking about uh, getting fit and healthy as a group. Um, you know, you have to these days. It used to be, you know, late nights and partying till you, till you drop, sort of thing. But yeah, we we can't really do that anymore. It's it's uh, the next day that gets you. We can still do it, but it's the next day. It takes longer to recover, doesn't it? Oh, we're on about a three or four day stretch now. It's it's horrible. So um, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that can sympathise, um, but there'll be people out there going, oh, what's wrong with you, you bloody pussy? Um, <laughs> yes, but you try jumping around for an hour and a half and screaming your tits off and then going and, you know, partying the next day. No, that's, it's not. Nah. So we're good. <laughs> okay, well, now, I, I like where you're headed with this too, bro. Like the 20 years it begins the year this year, you got the 21 years it begins the year next year. So you can keep milk on this until the 50th anniversary begins the year tour if you really want it. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, well, that's uh, it's it's gonna be the the tour that never ends, and um, yeah, yeah, we'll just keep going around and around until uh, no one comes, till no one comes to the shows anymore, and then, <laughs> then we'll retire disgracefully. But the it's kind of going back to grassroots, and this is what we wanted to do. We wanted to say a, a massive thank you to all the fans out there that might not be able to get to cities, but also we had lots of people saying to us, "How come you guys don't do regional to runs anymore?" Well, here we are. We, we're basically recreating the one of the runs that we did in 2023, more or less, but we threw it to the crowd and the fans and said, where do you want to see us play? Because we might have missed a place or not thought about a place for ages um, to which, you know, there was enough sort of people throwing their hat into the ring saying, hey, come out here and we'll support you. Um, so that's kind of the way we went about it. And I think um, it was a great idea. And yeah, we just, we really want to get back to that grassroots um, you know, just playing in front of fans that have been with us from the get-go. Good on you, bro. And so the 20-year-old tour did wrap up this year in February. So how was that run of shows? Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it was really good. So I think everyone always has a favourite show and none of us can really agree on which one it was um, because for some strange reason, we can never, we never really seem to all gel or play you know, that massive show at the same time, it's bizarre, but I'm sure a lot of bands out there can totally oh, relate. For this next run. Yeah, so that's the that's the thing. Like everyone had a favourite show. One person was Sydney, the other person was like the second show in Melbourne. Mine might have been like, you know, the second Brisbane show, whatever, whatever. Um, but that was amazing coming off that run, the energy that we were feeling coming off that and everyone was like, you, you know, do you want to go back out and do a, do a big run? And everyone was like, hell yeah, let's go. Um, so that was good. And then it all just really fell together quite, quite organically because Benny just pretty much put out the word and yeah. Then, then we started the, the, the crowd, you know, sourcing thing where we just threw it to the people to tell us where they want to come. And it was, the response was excellent. 
Yes, go on. Being a regional at all, like, are you going to be scaling back things production wise a bit, or are the regional guys getting the same as the big city? Oh, no, that's a good question. Um, no, we, we did have to scale it back a little bit just purely because of the size of stages that we're going to be playing on. Um, unfortunately, we got to, um, <laughs> we can't drag that big bloody screen with us uh, because I don't think it's going to fit on a few stages. So um, we're just going to take it back to the rock show and, and literally recreate a sort of that, um, that ferocity and intensity that we had like you know 21 years ago essentially which i think is really cool because when we toured with she had they told us that they did we were doing the same thing and we were like man that's really cool um so that's that kind of feeling you know it teleports you back to that time and it's just going to be a dirty smelly sweaty energetic balls to the wall rock show and the way it should be done and the way it's not done very often these days yeah 100 percent. yeah the last time we spoke was before the first run of shows and we discussed the difficulties of playing a whole album back to back because you didn't really write it with that in mind when you started. So were there any songs in that tour that just didn't fucking didn't work for you? Like they were too hard? Oh no, actually it's interesting because yeah, you you would think that. And we kind of had that mm, trepidation where we were like, oh shit, you know, which song, you know, is this gonna work? Is that gonna work? But um, you know, you always zig when you when you, you know, need to zag sort of thing. But funnily enough, we we stumbled onto doing the acoustic version of Overwhelmed, um, which worked really well. And it's that moment in the set, everyone gets to sort of, you know, take a breath. It's not really loud. We sort of draw the crowd in. Um, so, no, there was, I think we've tailored it pretty much to the way the band plays now and what we could do. Um, but also these days with bloody, you know, we've we've got a thousand musos in a box up the back and we've got all the, you know, the the, the orchestra tracks and stuff like, you know, just just basically and stuff which just fills out the sound which is lovely um and that works really well um you know and we've also we're taking a keyboard player um actually i'm just wondering if we're taking a keyboard player and cello switches this time <laughs> oh dude oh man that's always the way and it bloody um no one tells me anything they just keep me in the dark and keep feeding me bullshit <laughs> i'm not even gonna comment on that <laughs> <laughs> now back back when begin here came out bro like Always one second of insanity. Uh, Beautiful Mind and, and Crave are probably the best received and the most popular ones. But did you find on this run, like two decades on, that people were connecting with different songs from the album? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, you know, I think that our whole, the album as a whole has always connected with those people that loved it. Do you know what I mean? Um, for me, though, things have certainly changed. Like it used to be like Perception Twin and One Second were all the big bangers. You know what I mean? I wanted to be as loud and as raucous and as out there as we could possibly be, always, stuff like that. But now it's becoming about more so the nuance and the and the dark beauty inside um, uh, Beautiful Mind. So that's that's become a real um, crowd favourite. But also for me, it's a, it's a really nice moment in the set when we play it because we break it down to just keys, cello and, and, my, and myself. Um, but also I'm like finding, you know, little bits of other songs, like the middle section of Filling Silence, for instance, is like really tickling me every night. I love getting to that section. Um, yeah. And just oh, AD, that was that was a sleeper. I'd kind of forgotten about that song until we took it out on the road and, or even started practicing it. And then I was like, oh, man, this is a really good song. Um, yeah. So, we, we, man, it's almost like we're getting to relive the energy and that excitement we felt through these songs when we first wrote them. Oh, uh, I, I chucked on Begins here and, and had a listen to it while I was writing these questions, mate, and I've forgotten what a fucking good album it is, man. Like, it proves the theory that good music is timeless no matter when it was made. Yeah, 100%. It's got a darkness to it. It's got this mood and energy on it, and it's this kind of thing that I explain. It's it's in between, like, when you look at the wave files of all of the music, there's this kind of negative space in between. And there's something very interesting that happens on this album, especially that fills in those gaps. It's almost like you can hear through the slices of the, where the instruments sit. And there's this kind of mood and this vibration that happens not to get too, too crazy out there, but it's amazing to me that the album still holds up and lyrically it's still my favorite album that we've written. Um, and I just think it was going back to what I said at the start, it was, it was four fearless, uh, young men in a room all pushing in the one direction. This is like, you know, before the infighting sort of started and before relationships started to break down to a point where, you know, it was hard to write together. Um, and, but, you know, like 
Kurt could have walked into the room with any kind of riff and I would have gone, bang, here it is, let's go. And it would have been amazing to me. Um, and that's what I was talking about earlier. I was saying bands that are genuine and stay true to themselves and write for themselves will last longer than bands that are trying to catch the commercial dollar because that's fraudulent, like you're not your, your authentic self. And that's my advice to any young muso out there. Be fearless, be yourself, write the way you want to write and do it your way because if you hit the jackpot and you get there, like you will be a better version of yourself, a truer version of yourself because of that. Fantastic, man. And, and you actually bring up a good point earlier on in that too. Like it's going to look like we've worked these questions out in advance because you give me the perfect segue. But the, the one thing that really stood out for me at the beginning of the year was how much you actually let the songs breathe. Like a good, good friend of mine once told me that it's not what you put into a song, it's what you leave out of it. And it took me fucking ages to actually understand what he meant, but – when you listen to an album like Begins Here, you sort of you don't realise how, how rushed or how forced music is these days because too many bands try and put everything into one song and, and they destroy the soul of it. Yeah, 100%. And you know what's interesting? That when uh, Richard Kingsmill from Triple J first heard our stuff, um, he said there is a there is something about it. It's what we haven't put into it. And that struck me. And it's interesting that you say that because... I have not thought about that comment for 20 years, um, which is amazing. Um, and I thank you for bringing that back up because, um, yeah, it really is. It's it's about what, it's, you know, you don't have to pack it with with everything. And you're right, Begins here has, and that's what I was talking about, that negative space. It's the musical glue. It's what's not there that is actually creating that depth. And it's um, and it breathes, the album breathes because you can it can punch you in the face and keep stomping you and then let off and you're like, whoa you know what i mean so that's and and you don't get that with many albums like anywhere there's you know and you write about timeless albums for me i think begins here has always been that album i can listen to anytime and i do i listen to begins here at least once a year um to remind myself <laughs> what i was doing before my memory goes fully um <laughs> But it, it's, it's, it is actually, for me, it's a very beautiful album and the way it's sequenced as well, the way it moves through its, you know, its um, various phases is, is excellent. Very good. And I also found out something else through some research today too, bro. Like I always assume that you're in Butterfly Effect from the very beginning, but that's not the case. You're a ring in. Yeah, I was the uh, second singer. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was the second singer on the grassy knoll. Look out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, yeah, so look, I was just really lucky because I, I moved into a share house in New Farm with with a guy from West Aussie who knew Kim from Dead Letter before they were Dead Letter, and he said to me, he goes, "Oh man, I've got this muso friend because I started singing around the house, playing guitar, whatever." And um, he said, "Man, I've got this muso friend. You might, you know, you guys might click." And Kim came over, and we like became fast friends. And um, he said, he goes, oh, dude, we were practicing this practice room on Adelaide Street in Brisbane with this band that are, you know, might be looking for a singer. And I was like, cool, man, I'll, I'll come and like hang out. And it was, yeah, it was the guys. And um, they gave me a demo tape and and off we went. And the rest, as they say, is history. I don't know that is, mate. And so after, I suppose, are the Butterfly Effect going to be one of those nostalgic bands for now that just continue to chore the older material because it's so good? Or do you plan to keep releasing new music moving forward? Yeah, yeah, we're going to try some new music. I really want to go sort of into a more anthemic um like a more like a bigger vibe kind of like worlds on fire i'd like to write sort of big sort of six seven minute epics that's where i would like to take it because i'm just thinking man we're not a commercial rock band who cares about that shit anymore anyway let's write go back to what we want to write not that we've ever really written for commercial radio it just didn't work for us and 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 case in point everyone thought we were metal and it's like i had a an argument with a, a music director from a big commercial radio station because he said, you guys are too metal for our format. And I was like, are you, are you kidding? I was like, and, and, and case in point, that, that uh, radio station now plays a lot of music that sounds a lot heavier than us. So there you go. <laughs> so there you go. So you know what, and I, you know what, I respect everyone's right to, to think what they want, but um, it is, I've always been saying this, it's a little bit sad that, that commercial radio station doesn't sort of champion um, more Aussie bands during the um, listening hours from 6am to 6pm. <laughs> and you can shove all the Aussie music you want up between 12 and five o'clock in the morning, mate. It's not going to make a lick of difference. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, 
that's that's my contention. So I'll run with that, bro. So before we let you go, I've I've started a new segment with Heavy. So before we speak, I actually troll through your social media photos. And I've dug up a few from the past that I want to uh, bring to your attention and you can tell me about them. Okay. So this first one, mate, I want to know what was going through your head and then when these photos were taken. Okay. This should be good. Uh, that's... Uh... Look at your face. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's some pain and anguish. Um, that's probably I've either shit my pants or um. Looks like the money, <laughs> dude. Yeah, that's uh, man. I tell you what, you the camera often catches you at at at, at really um, you know, sort of sensitive moments <laughs> where you probably let yourself go a little bit. But you know what, the thing is, man, I cannot remain guarded on stage. I always let myself go and i think that's uh that's the true place but what am i what am i, I don't know what i'm thinking on either of those shots i'm channeling channeling my best uh yeah you're probably right it's probably an adult, adult film adaptation of the butterfly effect does uh does uh, something but does brisbane oh, I for sure are they <laughs> i think it's like a laugh about it now <laughs> all right this one's a little bit more um bit nicer but um like anniversaries are always coincide with alcohol people got to have a drink to celebrate man and you guys haven't let the team down with this what's going on dude yeah the the um the begins here gin yeah man that was that's a nice bloody drop if you if it's still available if you can get your hands on it uh groglords.com get on you know that and get it yourself a bottle it's very nice um also the begins here limited edition um vinyl that we released that i really love it and it's interesting because someone said why did why'd you go black and gold i said because we went blue and silver on the first one <laughs> and it ties into the gin. I'm like, uh, can we not? Are we not allowed to change it? I really love the color scheme, black and gold, baby, black and gold. Yeah, and you can bring out a next one. Can be saying, um, ends right now or something because it begins here. Yeah, by the ends time- now, ends now. Ah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit, that's good. Oh, I'm gonna steal that just so you know. Yours, mate. And it's then mine, this, but- I've heard mine, it's it's rumor that that you're um auditioning for Tool, and I didn't actually believe it until I saw this mm. photo. Oh, <laughs> someone else said that to me as well. They said, oh, because man, look, who you know, I love Maynard and I love Tool. Um, and we kind of wanted to use a little bit of that that coolness that they have. So we we borrowed, you know, uh, what do they say? Good bands borrow, great bands steal. Well, we just wanted to split the difference, but I loved it. It was very cool. Actually, a friend of mine said, Oh, did they take a video of you and put it on the screen? I said, No, that was me. I said, oh, I was up there. I said, Where do you think I sprung from? I'll, I'll uh, tell you, Maynard will never be as cool as you, brother, so he can uh, give up. You, you're too kind. I love your work. Thanks, mate. No worries, man. All right, well, All right, pleasure brother. to spend the um, 21 years of begins here. Kicks off in Cairns on January the 30, 25 dates regional. You get close to the capitals with Gold Coast and Ipswich and a few things like that. So yeah. I will be coming along to one of the local shows, brother, and we'll catch up then. Awesome, brother. See you, mate.